Hello everybody, welcome. Do you drink mineral water? When you finish with the bottle, cut it off with the scissors. Got yourself an ideal little um, scoop for your glaze materials. Here's another one, cut off. Right, let's just go to the table here. I'm just in the process of trying to figure out myself making of making mixing up of a simple glaze. This is actually going to be a um, an ash glaze. Well, it's going to be a very very simple glaze. Um, I've got here some some local mud, which I have dried added to water and then sieved. This is the sieved mud. Okay, so it's it's now broken up, ready to add. Um, and here I've got, this is wood ash, almond wood ash. Around where we live here in the country, in the countryside here in Spain we have a lot of um, almond trees and they are all the time burning off the um, the uh, branches etc. I've done some little tests here in my small test kiln and I've got here a result which I'm I'm going to play around with and that is according to what I've written down here Scorpion Hill which is just over there up there on the hill where I can see in fact from here that's where this comes from this has obviously got quite a lot of iron oxide in it and quite a, a large proportion of clay clay it's not 100% clay <coughs> anyway Scorpion Hill 75 and Almond Ash 25 and that's giving me quite a nice glaze I'm going to mix up a small batch of this now in those proportions and, um, and see how we come to what we come to hang on wait a minute I've got to work this out uh, so it's 75% right okay so I've got my my scales here I'm only going to mix up a not a very not a very large quantity. So um, let's have yeah. Now you can do do have a go at doing this. That's too much. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Now I've got as you see I've got my bucket here, I've got some water here. Let's pour the water water into the bucket. Not too much. It's always better remember to add your, your glazed materials to the, the water rather than mixing them up and then trying to add water to them. So first put some water in a bucket. So I've got there, um, yeah that's just about, just about right, that's about. I really like, you know, these very simple uh, glazes that can be obtained from local materials which are just around about me here that I really I really feel that's the way to go for for me personally as a potter that's what I want to do you know um, I don't like the idea of being dependent upon having to go down to a local clay supplier for every everything I need I want to be able to sort of y utilize from my environment as much as I possibly can it makes it a much more satisfying experience I think as a potter Okay, so we have there 75% or in this case 750 grams of, of that red clay. I'm going to have to put that in there to soak down and I'm now going to scoop up using my scoop. Now it's better, uh, it's better to use a mask here to put over your face. Um, I'm going to be careful, I'm not actually wearing a mask, but it's better to really, to be honest. Now this is wood ash that's not washed. Some people use 
washed wood ash and I this is actually in this case unwashed let's see that's 250 grams so we'll carefully add that there to the brew wood ash okay now I am a bit careful not to breathe breathe in when And that's just going to have to just stay there for now, and until this um, basically until this clay sort of just breaks down a bit. It should, shouldn't be long because it's dry, thoroughly bone dry, so that should absorb the the water very quickly. So, just to go over that again, very simply, a red a red a red clay, a, a local red clay, almost not 100% pure red clay, plus. 25% unwashed almond wood ash. Now you, I've also got over here, this is, what's this? This says sieved pine ash, October 01, bakery Valdalba. All oh, right. Well in our local bakery, they, they fire the wood oven, the, the bread oven there with, with, with pine wood ash. This is pine wood ash that's been sieved, probably through a hundred mesh sieve. You can see it's a lot, it's a lot whiter, isn't it, than the, than the, the almond ash. Probably contains different amounts of silica and things like that. It's very interesting to experiment with wood ash. It's something I am interested in and I want to pursue. So why don't you learn with me? Because I'm very much a novice in this. Part of my problem in coming from a family of potters is. All the glazed recipes and everything has already been all worked out, you know. Too easy and in my case I've, I've been too lazy in my life as a potter and I haven't really done enough experimentation. So I'm, I'm actually trying to educate myself, I'm buying a few books. I've got one here I've just bought actually by, uh, by Phil Rogers, Ash Glazes. Well I'm, I'm looking through that. I'm getting inspired as well. Some some lovely things there. I recommend that one. Anyway, and there are lots of books out there on um, making glazes from raw materials and from wood ashes and um, from I say raw materials. I mean lo locally easily easily obtained raw materials. So anyway, I'm certainly going to be practicing <laughs> with this one. Okay. We'll see you soon. Bye now.